there's a huge variety of circuit components used in every electric circuit, from resistors to inductors and capacitors to transformers, transistors, diodes, and beyond, and even lesser known components such as flip-flops, registers, logic gates, and more. Join me as we take a few minutes to learn about some of these circuit components. In an electric circuit, which device allows current to flow in one direction while completely blocking it in the opposite direction? Is it A, an inductor, B, a capacitor, C, a transistor, D, a diode, E, a transformer? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think it over. Let's first go over the answers that are not correct. First, let's talk about an inductor. An inductor is essentially a circuit component which is basically just a coil of wire wound on usually a magnetic material such as iron. And what it does is it concentrates the magnetic field that surrounds the wire when electricity runs through and it concentrates it in the core there. And it stores energy in the core. Now the primary purpose for inductors and circuits is to pass low frequency signals or DC signals. It lets the DC through, but it starts to resist or block AC electricity. So it passes DC and blocks AC electricity but inductors do allow electric current to flow in both directions, so obviously that's not the correct answer. So next, let's talk about the cousin of the inductor, uh, also known as the capacitor. This one also is not correct. A capacitor allows current to flow in both directions, but a capacitor essentially stores energy in the form of the electric field in between the two plates of the capacitor. The capacitor is constructed by two parallel plates which are very, very close together, and there's a dielectric insulator between them. So the two plates are not touching, they're separated by some insulating material, and then usually these plates are rolled up into a cylindrical shape. So if you look onto a circuit board and see cylinders sticking up on the circuit board, usually those are capacitors. They store energy in the electric field inside the capacitor. Now, what are capacitors used for? They're used to pass AC alternating current signals in the circuit, but block the DC signals. So it's exactly the opposite of the inductor. So if you think about the parallel plates of a capacitor, so if you hook a DC source up to a capacitor, what will happen is the capacitor will charge up. What happens is because the capacitor has a kind of a gap with an insulating material between the plates, it can accept electric charge and charge up electrons on the large surface area on the inside, but once it's charged up, then no more electricity can flow. So if you hook a DC source up to a capacitor, it'll charge up, but then it will not allow any electricity to pass any further. However, if you hook an AC source up to a capacitor, what will happen is because the electricity is switching back and forth, back and forth rapidly, the capacitor will charge and then discharge, charge and then discharge. So to alternating current signals, the electricity can pass through the capacitor because it's rapidly charging and discharging, whereas constant DC sources are effectively blocked. So inductors and capacitors are cousins of one another. Whereas the inductor stores energy in the magnetic field, the capacitor stores energy in the form of the electric field between the plates. Whereas an inductor allows DC current to pass because it's just a coil of wire, but begins to block AC signals due to the rapidly changing magnetic field, the capacitor is exactly the opposite. The capacitor blocks the DC signals and allows the AC signals to pass through. And using capacitors and inductors together, we can build what we call resonance circuits that only allow a single or a narrow band of frequencies through, and that is how we tune a radio to a specific radio frequency for reception. All right, so the next incorrect answer is the transistor. The transistor is not used to control the direction of the current per se. A transistor has absolutely changed the world of electronics when it was invented, and it has two primary purposes. 
The first purpose is the transistor is used to amplify electric signals. It's a three-prong device. And so what you have is kind of the input to the transistor that takes small signals in, and then you have the output of the transistor, which can be used as an amplifier to make a larger version of the input signals. That's what amplification is. It's taking the input signals, making an exact replica of the shape of it, but making the amplitude higher. And what that does is that effectively amplifies the signal. So for instance, if you have a microphone and you speak into the microphone, the raw signal coming out of the microphone would be a very small voltage, probably in the millivolt range. But that's not a high enough voltage to actually drive a speaker, and it certainly isn't a high enough power output or voltage output to drive an antenna to broadcast your voice across the air. So what we do is we use transistors to make a copy of the signal that is larger in amplitude. So we have a small signal in, and you can think of that small signal in as sort of controlling the output side of the circuit. It's almost like a valve that can be used to change the output current and voltage in direct lockstep with what the input is doing. So we can make an output signal exactly the same shape, but larger as the input signal. Now, amplifiers are incredibly useful, but really what changed the world when it comes to transistors is that they can also be used as their second main function, which is to be used as a switch. Transistors can be used as very, very fast electronic switches. A regular switch has a mechanical contact that has to switch back and forth and make contact and break contract. But a transistor can be used as a very, very fast semiconductor switch with no moving parts. And so what we have is the input of the transistor, whereas instead of amplifying it within a narrow range, what we can do is drive the input all the way high or all the way low, and then that will cause the output to be driven rapidly high or rapidly low in lockstep with the input signal. So what we can do is use the input signal to rapidly turn on or turn off whatever is happening on the output side of the circuit. So if I need a switch, instead of putting a mechanical switch in place, I can use an electronic switch called a transistor and I can control another part of the signal very, very rapidly by the use of a transistor being and acting as a switch. Now it turns out that there are many ways to connect transistors together. And when you do that, you can create what are called logic gates. You can create OR gates, you can create AND gates, you can create NOT gates, and a great many other Boolean operators can be constructed straight from using transistors. And what that allows us to do is to create very complex structures that can do lots of things, like we can create memory with transistors, computer memory. We can create counters. We can create central processing units. And because the transistor is electronic in nature, in the sense that there's no moving parts, it can rapidly switch on and off. And that is why computers can operate so quickly with adding numbers, because there's no moving parts. Everything is happening electronically without anything moving. And that brings us to our last incorrect answer, which is the transformer. The transformer does not restrict the direction of the current flow, but the main purpose of transformers is to take an AC voltage of a certain value and either raise it to a higher voltage level, which would also be AC alternating current, or reduce it to a lower voltage level, which would also be AC current. So transformers are electronic devices that work on AC voltages and currents. Now what they are is essentially a magnetic core with a primary winding and also a secondary winding. So the primary and the secondary winding are linked together with the magnetic fields of these coils. And by having a different ratio of turns on the primary winding and on the secondary winding, you can control if the output voltage goes up or down. Now, a lot of people think because the voltage can be increased that you're getting free energy or free power, but it turns out that for transformers, when you step up the output voltage, then the output current goes down by the same ratio. And so what happens is the power on the input side is always the same as the power output on the output side, again, assuming no losses in the transformer at all. Now, transformers are used everywhere. Most notably, when we transmit power across the country, we do it at very high voltages. We do it at high voltage because we have less losses in the transmission line. The transmission line heats up as you send electricity through it, but when you do it at a higher voltage, you have less losses. So it's better to transmit it at high voltage, AC high voltage. 
but when it gets into a substation for a neighborhood or when it goes into a house, that high voltage is dangerous. So we use very large transformers to step them down to a safe voltage for the neighborhood and for the houses. And even on your consumer electronic devices like laptops or phones or tablets, the power brick that you have has a transformer inside which is taking that wall voltage and usually stepping it down and turning it also into DC for powering these devices at a lower and safer voltage. So the correct answer to the question as to what circuit component allows electric current to flow only in one direction while being blocked by flowing in the other direction, the answer to that is the diode. The diode allows electric current to only flow in one direction, so you can kind of think of a diode as a one-way valve or a check valve that only allows the electrons to flow one direction. The details of how that works has to do with how the silicon, usually they're made of silicon, how they are doped, which means impurities that are put inside of the silicon during manufacturing. But if you hook a diode up in one direction, you will see that electricity will flow. But if you turn the diode around in the opposite direction, you will see that no electricity will flow at all. Up to a certain point, this is called reverse biasing. When we bias it in the forward direction, we allow electricity to flow, but when we turn it around, it's called reverse biasing. Now, a diode is only a physical device of a certain small size, so if you put too much voltage in the reverse direction, of course, you can overcome the device, you can burn it up, and then, of course, electrons will begin to flow. But within its operating characteristics, it only allows current to flow in one direction. Now you might ask, why do we even want a circuit component that only allows current to flow in one direction? Well, the main reason, or at least one big reason, is diodes are used for what we call rectification. So when we have an AC voltage, it goes up and then it swings negative in the negative direction and then it goes back up to the positive direction and it does that very, very rapidly. But often we wanna take AC electricity and convert it to DC electricity. So diodes, because they only allow the current to flow one direction, by connecting them in certain ways in circuits, you can take that AC signal and you can change it to only flow in one direction and then you can use capacitors to smooth out the voltage and turn it into a DC voltage. So the bottom line is diodes are an integral part in taking AC electricity and converting it into DC electricity, along with transformers, which we just talked about. So when you look in most consumer devices for power supplies or computer power supplies, you'll find transformers. You'll also usually find diodes and capacitors if what they're trying to do is convert it back to DC. Oh, and by the way, remember we just talked about transistors, which have basically changed the world for computers and everything else? Transistors are effectively made internally of diodes connected in different ways. So the diode is the building block of the transistor, which is in turn the building block of all computing devices we have today. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you're a fan of science, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.